I'm considering joining the Lost Relic Games Game Jam. Um, I've been following the channel for quite a while now and, and I really like the content the guy puts out. Um, so I'm thinking I might get involved. I've got a couple of ideas for a game. Um, one of which would be like a sort of sliding puzzle game. Um, not a particularly original concept I know, but uh, it's something I've not tried to do before. So I might try and do that, see if I can connect the two sides of the level up, since the theme is connection. There's a decent amount of time in this jam. It's about eight days or nine days or something like that. I can't quite work it out, um, but I've got enough time, even though I've missed the start of it. I've got eight days and, se and 17 hours remaining. So let's see what I can do. So it turns out it's actually quite a difficult idea. I now have uh, a block. I can drag my block around uh, horizontally, which is great. It's exactly what I want. And when I let go of the block, it will sort of snap to uh, position and drop down, which is perfect. That's exactly right. Um, I have these ray casts on the block, and when the block collides with the uh, wall, you can't drag the block anymore. Perfect, you may think. Uh, the problem with it is the fact that I now can't drag the block off of the wall, and also if I drag one block into another block, uh, they just get stuck together and I can't do anything. So, yeah, it, it, this is quite frustrating. <laughs> it's taken me about two, uh, uh, two, or two and a half hours to get to this point, and uh, yeah, it's tricky. So I've completely changed the code that now does this. Uh, my ray casts are now disabled by default and then as the block is moved left or right, it enables or disables the ray cast in that direction. Consequently, when you hit a wall, you can move no further. And that's a bit annoying because you should be able to move back. But when you let go, the block drops down and the ray casts are then disabled, which means you can then move it again until it hits an object. So at the moment the only problem with this is the fact that I intend to make it so that you can move a block around and then when you let go it should drop down which is what it's doing at the moment but you should be able to be you should be able to move something in one direction and then change your mind and move it back in a different direction before it um, stops you from moving it completely so it turns out I've got another problem um, whilst this works uh, when you drag slowly into a block if you slam into the block really fast it is possible to jump straight through the block and come out the other side obviously that's not exactly ideal uh, not entirely sure I'm going to fix that so I've kind of got around it by clamping the maximum movement speed uh, so that now when the block is moved around you can't get it to go too fast without it hitting that maximum speed and consequently sort of bump into the other block which is fine um, and it sort of comes to a, a, a stop. So here's the code that I've written so far. I've got some variables defined at the top here. I have my ray casts um, set from the object. I capture the input on the actual um, block and the bulk of the work is done in the physics process so if it's being dragged and if it's not hitting something then it's going to work out the movement change based on the mouse position currently versus the previous mouse position it then clamps that it's that line of code that I've just added in it clamps that to um, to be within the maximum speed it works out which direction you're going in and enables and disables the ray casts accordingly and then it changes the position of the block based on that movement change. Um, if we're not dragging then we disable the ray cast completely, we um, lock it to the closest grid um, which is 16 by 16 so the closest square, grid square um, not a hundred percent happy with this yet, and then we obviously apply the gravity so that it falls down, 
and then the other, the other part is this, uh, this input that basically detects when the um, UI touch is released and sets the previous math position to just be x2 and is dragging this then to false and I have an which basically just returns true if either of the ray casts is colliding. I'm kind of tempted to put this into a state machine I'll be honest um, I think that might work nicely but it's not a very complicated block of code so I think maybe state machines might be a bit too much for this project but I'll see I'll keep an eye on it. It's day two um, I've created myself a Trello board and put into it some backlog items um, I've also added in the prototype movement into my done list um, it's kind of buggy but yeah I guess it kind of works uh, tonight I intend to fix the drop collisions and I'm going to look at creating the two and three block variants and uh, see if I can get those sorted so I've now added um, a two block and a three block to the game uh, and I've also sorted out the collision detections so that when a block is alongside of another block it actually drops down this is pretty good and works nicely apart from if you are trying to move a block within the stack uh, it it moves everything above it and that's not that's not what I want so yeah got to try and work out how to sort that out but apart from that um, it's kind of working I've turned off the visible collision shapes so you can get a better look at what's going on and I've made it so that when the block is on the floor, when it detects that it's on the floor, um, it greys itself out and when it is not on the floor and therefore it is active then it colours itself in. Um, as you can see here when there's a stack of several, uh, they're all, it, it's, you know, it's kind of flickering on and off like it's not on the floor and then it is on the floor so something screw is going on with my collision detection I think. I've spent a little bit of time refactoring and I have decided I'll implement a state machine after all and so I have moved my code that was doing everything into multiple states so I've now got a spawned state which is nice and short uh, I have a landed state, I have a dragging state, I have a released state, so this is when you let go of the, uh, the mouse, and I have a falling state. Uh, and this is not too bad, it has fixed some problems but has introduced different problems. Specifically in my level I have deliberately put some blocks close together. When the game launches they detect that they're on the floor and don't move um, which is obviously wrong because they are not on the floor they are floating in midair. I also have this weird um, bug now when I drag it a little tiny bit it moves across and you'll see it drops. Perfect. That's great. Um, nothing else drops. Um, so, so nothing else reevaluates that it is floating in midair, and obviously that um, is not very good. I'm starting to get a bit tired now. I'm making mistakes. I actually recorded another couple of video clips, but didn't turn the microphone on. So, go me. Okay, so I'm addressing this problem here by um, adding a bunch of floor casts uh, underneath my blocks. Uh, you may wonder why there's a pixel gap between the casts and the block. It's because whilst a, a ray cast has the ability to exclude the parent, if you put it within a node 2D, it simply excludes the node 2D and not the actual collision shape. So it was just returning true all the time. Anyway, dropping it down, one more pixel works. Um, I have also created a new game state into which I have a dragging boolean and this is simply updated when uh, the dragging state occurs so it sets game dragging to be true and then when that's finished the game dragging is false and that means that I can check to see whether or not the game is currently dragging uh, whilst uh, the, the was detecting for the floor and what that means is my blocks all nicely drop down when I have one block and I move it around 
they all drop down again. Great, you may think. However, sometimes it goes a bit crazy and I don't quite understand why. Um, but sometimes if you let go of the block at a specific point, everything kind of gets thrown around. You end up with gaps that shouldn't be there. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it it's working better, but not 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 working properly at all. So anyway, I'm I'm absolutely shattered. Oh, that's interesting. Look, it's well, it's, it's just it's not working, is it? Um, it's twenty past one. I'm calling it a night. I'll fix this tomorrow. It's day three, and I am I'm looking at how I go about removing a line. Uh, so my idea is I have an area 2D at the bottommost line at this point in time. I'll have one for each line in the play area. And that area 2D looks purely at the blocks. And what I'm thinking is that I should be able to um, look at all the overlapping bodies. And if the value of the overlapping bodies adds up to be the same as the play width, i.e. there are 10 blocks and the play width is 10, then I should be able to destroy those blocks and add the score to a total. That's that's what I'm thinking, so I'm going to see how that goes. Okay, this isn't looking too bad. If I just reconfigure my blocks, as I drag this one in, it deletes the line. So that's working in exactly the way that I want it to. Okay, I've duplicated this line area to every single line, and now when I drop a block, it will delete the line in the middle, and the others all drop down nicely. I've added a little UI layer to track the score and the multiplier in the game, and within the code itself, I have um, basically made it so that the game score equals the score for um, the line, so it'll always be 10 at the moment, um, multiplied by the game multiplier, and every time it destroys a line, it will double the multiplier. Within the block script, I uh, basically, where I detect the uh, the touch event, so the, the, the clicking part, um, we set the game multiplier to 1 every time. So that means that as soon as the user interacts with it again, the multiplier is reset. So back to my Trello board, um, I have worked out how to delete a line. I'm just going to skip the active state. I have added a scoring system and I have um, added a UI to track the score. It is not very pretty, but it will do. And actually, I've also done the bonus multiplier. Yeah, done the bonus multiplier for combo clears. Still got to fix my drop detection. That's not working quite nicely yet and I still need to work out actually how to spawn a new line. But I think what I'm gonna do next actually is create some assets because I'm getting pretty bored of just looking at this uh, these plain blocks. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use some Kenny assets for this. Um, I've got the roguelike RPG pack lined up and the caves pack, mainly because I think within here there's um, some sort of waterfall type textures and this will all make sense um, once I show you what I'm going to come up with. I have now created a background graphic and as you can see here what I have is effectively uh, two areas of grass um, and a river, whatever you want to call it, in between with a little waterfall at the bottom. I need to add some sort of rocks or something to make it look like the blocks which will become something else. Uh, get stuck on those uh, on, on those rocks and so they don't just fall straight off the edge. But the idea is the fact that the um, there will be a forest on this left hand side that's on fire and you uh, are required to connect the two sides of the river together in order to um, help the animals in that forest to escape. Uh, that's my idea. So effectively the player will create a bridge across the river and the, the animals will be able to escape. That's the plan. I've replaced the blocks with tree trunks and boats and treasure chests and these will be, be the uh, the way that you, you link up the 
the two sides of the bank. I've also added in a next button which generates a random line of stuff. Um, as you can see here, it drops down. For some reason it's not a line all the time. <laughs> it should be, um, but it's kind of working. Um, I've still got that sort of positional bug occurring um, whereby sometimes they don't line up perfectly and that is causing a few problems. So I'm going to have to try and sort that out uh, fairly soon. Here, look, for example, you can see this boat should be in that position there. In actual fact, this should be in that position there. So it's, it's not quite right yet, but in terms of producing something that is playable, kind of works and yeah, I've still got that thing going on there but yeah it's, it's working it's okay so I've been trying to diagnose my positioning issue um, you can see here in my physics process I've got lots of versions of uh, debug and all that sort of stuff and what it effectively boils down to and I apologize this will be jerky um, is that when I move my uh, block around it is detecting the position, it's working out the various remaining uh, amounts to the next grid reference. When I let go though, it rounds it down and then it rounds it up again immediately. This is really, really odd. And consequently what happens is it, it kind of jumps to the next column every single time. It doesn't matter where you put it, it jumps across. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But each time it's detecting uh, a remaining value twice. And this has been a bit of a head scratcher for me. I have, however, found the problem. So it turns out that in my dragging script, I'm looking to see whether or not the block is hitting something and I'm moving it accordingly. And then I have my uh, transition state at the bottom saying if the owner is not dragging then we're going to transition to released. It turns out that as it transitions to released it's still calling this uh, this block of code. So if I move it and I make it an else if so I have a block same thing when I let go now it only finds the remaining position once and so you can actually position the block where you want it to be. Now that I've worked out what's going wrong with this um, and having fixed it, I should be able to dramatically tidy this up. Uh, so I don't actually think I care about any of this. I don't care about any of these print statements. I think I can literally just stepify it and get rid of all of this. Perfect. I've added in the ability to generate lines at different positions within the um, within the game board right here and I've also changed it now so that the multiplier resets when you generate a new line as opposed to um, when you click on anything and that actually has really improve the feel of the game. Um, effectively now you've got a, a sort of a risk reward situation whereby you want a lot of blocks because you can get a higher score but the more blocks you pull down the greater risk you stand of um, of losing. Well you can't lose yet but you will have a greater risk of, of losing which is kind of nice actually and it, it makes the thing feel more like a game and that's obviously kind of what I'm after. I've made a few changes to the UI layout. I've put the button in the bottom right corner now because that feels a bit better and also the multiplier appears in that area too so that when you clear a line it shows you the multiplier and, and that's the only time it does it. I've also added in levels to the game. Uh, these make it progressively more difficult um, effectively at level one you get five moves and that's five sort of movements of an object before it will push down the next line automatically um, and then that gets harder and harder so at level two you only have four moves level three and you have three moves etc when you get down to um, I think it's level six it starts dropping multiple lines of um, 
of blocks and that and that and it'll do that every turn um, it gets quite difficult at level six so I'm not entirely sure the difficulty curve is correct but for a game jam I think that's pretty good I've also added a little grid to the uh, background I've twe uh, I've tweaked the um, the banks of the river a little bit so that it better fits with the graphics and there's also a, a, a um, an area 2D that's slightly off screen that checks to see if there's any collisions with it and if there are then you lose the game. There's still no game over screen yet uh, but that is on my list. So this is the state of the Trello board at the moment. Uh, you can see here I've fixed all the horizontal positioning and I've sorted out the overlay, I've got the auto spawn happening, there's a game over trigger. Uh, the next thing I need to work on is some sort of UI element to show how many moves you've got before you're going to get your next drop. So this is what I've come up with. Uh, there is now a move count counter uh, down the right hand side and as you move your blocks around so that decreases when it runs out replenishes and that same thing happens if you do a quick drop this also changes based on the level you're on um, and yeah works really well actually I quite like it it is day five and I'm working on my game over state um, I've already got the logic in place that actually captures when you lose the game but now I actually need to display something and this is what that looks like in game so I've not cleared a single line I've just uh, clicked on drop now many times and boom I get the game over screen and it uh, pops up over the top of the screen so I just need to wire up these um, these scores now and actually make it display something and I've also got this um, uh, leaderboard or the start of the leaderboard thing going on here as well so um, yeah just working on this at the moment hopefully I'll get this sorted out tonight Okay, it's quite late now. Um, it's about 20 past one again and I am absolutely shattered. Um, however, I've got this working and it's pretty sweet, to be honest. I have, uh, well, I'll show you. So I've, I've just stacked up a, a level here and if I just drop another couple of times, you will see I get my game over the screen and I type in my name and uh, my name will be Bob. Uh, and I've also added um, a thing whereby I can only have names that are greater than three characters so let's go bobby for example click add and boom i have a high scores table it tells me the position it highlights my score within it tells me the level that i got to the number of rows that i actually cleared and my score how awesome is that i'm really pleased <laughs> but now i'm going to bed it's day six, it's lunchtime. Uh, there's four days left of the jam, uh, so I'm gonna squeeze a quick 10 minutes in to take a look at uh, the main menu and hopefully adding in a close button to the leaderboard. Also, I need to check that the scrolling's actually working because I didn't check that last night, um, but it is a whopping 30 degrees inside my office, so uh, yeah, it, I'm, I'm rather warm. I spent about 15 minutes. I now have a basic menu. Uh, with my lovely game title, Animals Crossing. Uh, I have buttons, obviously, that all work. The high score one takes you to the high scores table. There's now a little close button in the top right, and play and takes you into a new game. I was just ticking off my task on the Trello board when I realised I hadn't actually checked that the scrolling bar works in the high, in the high scores table. So I've quickly dumped in a load of test data, and I mean, it, it works, but it looks awful. So um, I will be having to fix this later on. I think I haven't got time to do it now. So we'll sort this later. Many hours later. I've just spent a few minutes um, just making this scroll bar look a little bit nicer. It's now the same sort of colors as the panel. And I have a little hover over and that allows you to sort of click and drag it. Obviously the scroll wheel works as well. So, I mean, it's not, it's not perfect, but it's, it's okay. The next thing on my list is recolor assets. Allow me to explain. I am using, for the most part, uh, Kenny's roguelike RPG pack, and it's brilliant. There's lots of cool stuff in it. Um, you know, there's there's some brilliant elements. But overall, after having looked at it for hours and hours and hours now, um, 
it's a bit maybe desaturated it's a bit kind of brown and I've had my head turned by other palettes that are available uh, that are maybe a bit more colorful like this Resurrect 32 palette and I quite like this um, low spec 500 as well and I just wonder what my game would look like if I was to recolor using these or one of these palettes I just and I can't get that thought out of my head so I'm, I'm, I might give it a go and see what it looks like So I've done some different versions. Um, I have my original Kenny version, top left. I have the um, Resurrect 32 palette here. And then I've got two variations of the low spec 500. And okay, whilst I haven't put in the checkerboard in, in these and I haven't put in the, uh, the waterfall colorings, I honestly, I, I like Kenny's. I, I know I said I didn't, but I, I do. It's, it's nicer to look at. I think the dots um, are just too contrasty in, in all of the others, to be honest. They they just they just don't work. So I think for the amount of effort it's going to be to recolor all of Kenny's assets, I think what I'll do is stick with the original Kenny background, and then maybe at some point when I'm actually adding in new new art I might see if I can introduce a bit more color that way or, 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 or some different colors rather rather than just the sort of browns and greens and stuff so yeah an experiment worth doing but ultimately a failed one I spent some time sorting out sound effects and so forth in the game so I now have a little hover over um, effect on these buttons and when you go into the option which is kind of nice and also in the game itself I have um, quite a few sound effects. So I have three layered background sounds. I have the bird song, I have a uh, fire, burning fire, there's no burning fire yet, uh, and I have a ribbon noise. And then I have uh, obviously the UI click on the button and when you pick up blocks and put them down then you get nice sound effects and then when a uh, line gets destroyed you get this sound effect which is nice as well in fact the only sound effect that you don't have at the moment uh, for some reason is the sound effect when it effectively lands so it should play a noise then and it isn't and I don't know why because the sound effect is there and it works the same as all of the other sound effects but for some reason it's just not playing it. It's day seven and I've spent a bit of time making my game look a bit prettier. Uh, so you'll notice my background now has some uh, flowers and grass and so on and so forth. I've also added um, a line of rocks down here uh, to make it look like you know, the reason why the, the objects aren't falling over the edge of the waterfall. And I put a bit of time into the trees. So I have a, a tree node here, and the reason why this is a separate node is because I have on my sprite um, multiple trees, and there is simply a, a, a little script that randomly selects which tree it's going to display. I've also worked on some fire, uh, and this will sit on top of the trees so that it looks like this. And that coupled with the uh, the background noises and uh, the sound effects and so forth really brings the game quite a nice feeling of life and also a bit more colour. I'm quite liking the different flowers and so forth and I like the fire and I like the rocks even, even though they're grey because it, it takes away from that brownie tone and consequently the game feels much nicer to play. 
Um, so plan of action is tonight uh, to work on the animals. What I actually want to have happen is when you complete a bridge, a connection across the river, um, I want animals to sort of stampede out of the trees and cross over that bridge, destroying the bridge, um, and then sort of disappear off the right hand side. So I need to find some animal sprites or, or create some animal sprites and work on that. I've come across this really great asset pack by Kasper Wozniak, hopefully I've not butchered your name. Um, it looks great actually, it's got lots of different animals in it and whilst they're not necessarily all forest animals, I don't think it's really going to matter. Um, lots of great motion, lots of nice colours, I'm going to use this pack. So I've got the new uh, animals in to the game, I've created a scene with a bunch of them on and I've got a, a little animation where they sort of run from from left to right and then I'm simply calling a method when they get to a specific point called crossed and what that does is it emits a signal called crossed which the world can then pick up on and once they have crossed the river it's going to clear that line and then I've simply substituted my my previous clear line code for a show animals code. So in game that looks like this. Works quite well. I've got a bit of a weird bug going on at the moment though whereby it seems to reset your level to zero before then actually incrementing it. Um, I've obviously got to go and fix that. But fairly pleased with the effect in general. I have fixed my bug and I have also added some particles um, behind the animals so it looks like that they are kicking up dust as they run across. I've also added a stampede sound effect and I've changed the way that the, um, the blocks are selected, well not, not the way they're selected, the way the blocks are represented when they are selected so you can see now they they sort of highlight in white. Uh, I've also just a little subtle effect whereby I'm effectively lifting the uh, the block out of the water. So I've, I've given them additional sprites for that purpose, uh, including the tree. So it's just a just a little bit of polish. I quite like it. It's day 8 and I'm looking at my main menu and my uh, high scores menu at the moment. Um, I had this idea about creating a bridge as the logo for Animals Crossing, but looking in this incredibly brilliant sprite sheet by Kenny, there aren't any bridge assets, so I'm going to have to make my own. I've taken these sort of piers, I guess they're supposed to be intended for, and these sort of uh, pillars and crafted them into a bridge which I think looks okay not too bad and then when you add the text on top of it it looks uh, it looks quite nice so I'm gonna drop that in the game so this is what it looks like in the engine I've changed the layout of the main menu so that I've pulled these buttons across into the middle I kind of like the idea of having them on the right hand side I always seem to do them in the middle, but for this specific game, it makes no sense at all, especially when you put this background behind it. I've added some animals, uh, I've added the trees on fire, etc. And then when you add the logo, the overall effect is kind of nice. So yeah, this will be my, my main menu. And on the high score screen, I've simply done the same effect that I did on the game over screen, whereby there's a sort of a, a black blurred semi open a semi-transparent background so that when you're looking at it, it, it it kind of feels a bit like the rest of the game. My Trello board is starting to look a little bit sparse. Next up I'm going to make the fire glow which is really just a bit of uh, titivation but actually I think what I might need to do more importantly is a little intro uh, and by that I'm just going to have some text explaining that the creatures are trapped in the forest and you need to connect the two sides of the river together to create a bridge. This uh, difficulty selection idea I think I'm going to not bother with simply because what I've actually ended up doing is ramping up the difficulty as the game progresses. So I'm going to archive that and that literally then just leaves 
the music and again for that I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna have music actually within the game because the background noises and the sort of ambient sounds I think are probably enough I, I might try and put a track over the top of it and see how it mixes but uh, it might just end up being a complete mess so get in there it's day nine I have made a few changes um, first of all I now have a nice glowing effect on my fire uh, I've also as you can possibly tell added a camera and I have the ability now to do a bit of screen shaking when the animals stampede across the bridge I've also put in some music so whilst I technically still have another day in this jam uh, I don't actually have any time to work on this tomorrow so I have pushed it up to my itch.io page and I have created the, uh, the HTML page for it and actually it's very helpful because the HTML version of the game does not run very well <laughs> um, I have discovered that sometimes it will uh, spawn too many blocks and it triggers the game over state before you've actually got a chance to do anything at all so to counteract that I have added in a little close button to the game over screen so that you can just quit out and start again um, so yeah that's uh, that's a thing also there's um, a strange well a couple of strange bugs um, first of all the the trees don't randomize well they, they do but they don't randomize properly and I've got no idea why that's doing that and also when you're dragging um, some of these blocks around there's a weird little graphical glitch in the HTML version you'll see it on the boat most clearly as I'm pulling it across it kind of renders a whole new line of pixels to the left of it which is very strange does it a little bit with the, uh, the, the treasure chest but not so much it's mainly the boat that does it um, but you know these are uh, bugs it's a it's a game jam game it's the HTML version of it I'm not too fussed about that I also noticed a slight oversight in the fact that I don't actually have a pause button which means that when you're playing the game in full screen mode um, one of the downloaded versions you can't actually stop playing the game so um, I'm just adding in a pause button here just to rectify that situation and with that I would like to introduce the final game I just wanted to say thanks very much for watching this video if you have enjoyed it please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel and maybe check out some of my other devlogs for other game jam games and other main games in fact as well um yeah check them out thanks very much see you in the next one